Today we're going to have some fun by creating texture on a vellum panel to create a fun background for a card project. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. This card is so easy to do, but I kind of plotted my way through and in the end, it's kind of cute. I don't really have anything else to say about it except it's coming up next. For today's card, I'm going to combine two sets and Whenever I have a big, beautiful floral, I get a little panicky and I really want to try something that I've seen a lot of folks do and pair it with a very graphic, structured greeting. And I think this set from Simon Says Stamp called XL Stacked Greetings is pretty awesome. There's lots of different sentiments that you can work with here for a myriad of card ideas, right? So these are the basics and let's see, what else am I going to have here? A little white powder, a little Versamark. I'm going to grab some vellum and I'm going to keep this pretty simple. So let's get started. I need to cut a piece of vellum that is going to be large enough for this floral image. And so I think if I put this in my paper trimmer, oh boy, that's at least six inches tall. So all I'm going to do, let's see. Well, do I want to, now I'm going to do it this way. Um, Let's just bring it out a little bit like that so I know it's a little bit larger than six. And then I always keep my extra pieces of vellum inside one of my clear pockets, my cardstock sleeves from Simon. These are really nice. I label them and keep everything nice and tidy. Now I don't want to waste more than I have to because sometimes, you know, you'll have a little piece and uh, I'll just cut a couple inches off here. All right, let's just, let's just do that. And I'll put this strip back in as well. Neat, tidy, organized. Yay. So let's take this off. It's, it's a huge, huge image. And I'm, I want to be able to cut the whole thing out with the coordinating die. Now, of course, I'm not going to make a card that's big enough to encompass this whole thing because I, I don't make, I really don't do much in the way of large size cards. I am a USA2 card person through and through. It's just kind of my favorite size. And even though I will be using the coordinating die to cut this, I am definitely, oh, let's go like that, definitely going to be trimming the piece down. Now I do want to powder up the vellum just so that, you know, any uh, static or oil from my hands does not cause my embossing powder to stick there. And I'm going to use this Rabbit Hole Designs anti-static powder tool. I'm going to ink up the whole stamp with Versamark. I'm going to ink this up really well. I only want to stamp it once if, if I can get away with it because Vellum always wants to stick and come up and I, I just think a one time should be good to go. So let's get our other tool, this big stamp press, my Debbie tool, and I'm going to start transferring the ink. Just work my way around and press the stamp down, putting pressure on the misty door. Large stamps, I think, are tricky. They always take me a little bit of time. And hopefully we'll be able to see if the image needs to be stamped again, but I think it's gonna be okay, actually. And let's see if we can pick this up. And the nice thing is on the vellum, you can really see that. Look how good that turned out. See the shine where the ink is? Great, I will worry about cleaning off this stamp later. I'll just use a little stamp chamois, but I want to move on. I'm going to grab my white powder from Simon Says Stamp. This is the fine detail white. I'm just going to sprinkle it all over. It's a big image. My powder is getting a little low here, but I think almost the whole jar. I always do this. I don't try to save powder. I just, you know, pour it out, let it sit there for a second because it's going to going to stick beautifully to this and shake it around a little and and look at that isn't that gorgeous mm. I'm gonna bring in this little pad because I think sometimes when I have a larger 
thing to heat emboss. I like to have my Positively uh, Everything tool, my PET, underneath to protect my mat from warping. Look at that gorgeous, beautiful bloom. Ah, oh, so pretty. It's going to make a beautiful textural accent background, if you will, to the cards. So let me grab the coordinating die. I'm going to run this through my Gemini Junior off camera and then we'll proceed. However, I just realized I am going to have to trim a little of that paper just to make sure it fits. I only have the Gemini Junior. And I want to make sure, ooh, that's very close there. Let's get a little closer. Want to make sure this fits on my plate. All right, that looks good. Okay, now I'll run that through. Now I have a ginormous bloom on vellum, perfectly cut. Isn't that cool? All right, time to move on. I am going to make a birthday card. The nice thing about these greetings, um, there is just one die to cut all of them out. It's just a nice rectangle. There is a just a nice rectangular die that they all fit into. Now I'm trying something different today for my stamping and blending. I thought I would try stamping on some, and blending, ink blending, on some Hammer Mill cardstock, the 100 pound. This is a new cardstock for me and I've been using it for hot foiling, but I thought, well, you know, it's pretty smooth. Why don't I try it for this card idea? So I'm priming this stamp. See how it gets a little almost cloudy? And that's what you want. Um, or again, you can just use your hand, or I know there are other priming tools, but let's lay down that powder so we are prepped and primed. Ink up our stamp really well with the Versamark. We're in the corner nicely and we're going to stamp. Transfer the ink. And always give your piece a second so that the ink can transfer. Don't be too hasty with this part, right? I think this should be just lovely. I don't know if I'm going to need to stamp it again, but I'll tell you in just a second. You know what? That looks great. And let's sprinkle on the clear detail, fine detail powder. We're just preserving that white cardstock below so that we can ink blend over it. I think that's going to be just fine. Let's make sure it's all shiny and that's how you know the powder is melted. I'm going to ink blend. I am just going to do a very simple ink blend. I, I want to show you this. I always use paper towel to clean off my brushes, but I saw someone do it on a clothes roll and I thought that was so smart, right? Because why would you do it any other way? That is if you have a table that vibrates like mine does. So I just wanted to show you that because I felt like it was very exciting. We're going to start out here with the color Cheeky. And I really, oh, I should have put my Tim Holtz uh, grip mat underneath here. I am just going to create a rainbow blend. So that's it. And it's going to be very simple. 
It, this is going to add the color to my card, okay? And well, I, I think it will be good. Stick with me. We'll find out. All right. Starting out with Cheeky, which is kind of our pinky color here. And then I'm going to move on to Melon. I could even use smaller brushes on this if I wanted just to isolate those spaces a little, but I think, you know what? This will be fine. Okay, I'll just come out from the side and work in. That way I won't get anything too blotchy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier for me to ink blend with my paper churned. Oh, that's so pretty already. <gasps> Look at that. Mm, love it. Let's get our yellow. Hmm. I'm liking this paper towel technique. Let's load up my brush. This is lemonade. I haven't done a lot of rainbow stuff lately. Kind of been into, I guess, not rainbow stuff. <laughs> but isn't that pretty? Mm. See how the mat holds my pad and it doesn't even move? I love it. Love it. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's go like that. And again, by starting kind of off to the edge, I eliminate any big splotches that are gonna come from the ink right, you know, right in the center like that. Ooh, that is a, just a pretty, pretty color. All right, look at that. Mm. Let's bring in sea foam. I don't have a purple to add to this. I know that there will, well, I hope there's gonna be a purple coming in the Simon collection of positively saturated colors because you know purple is good i'm showing the purple of the rainbow with my fingernails that's for all of you who love your purple all right coming on in and bringing that over for the the blue sometimes i don't do purple because i quite literally like in this case i just run out of space you know it's not i promise you it's not an anti-purple statement all right Nice. I'm going to come right back over here, blend that out a little. But I think that is really pretty. Come in here a little bit more. And just to wipe off any residue, I just keep a nice little uh, e cloth type of micro, well, it's not microfiber, it's an e cloth. And then I'll just wipe over in case there's any ink pooling on top. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now that is going to be the greeting. Just taping this into place so you can see how it frames out perfectly. But I think that would also be very easy to cut out on your own. But I'm going to go ahead and use the die and then we'll proceed with building out the card. I'm going to create my card base. This is going to be a top folding USA2. And I'm going to make it right out of this hammer mill because I'm, you know, I'm, I want to see how it folds. I wonder if it cracks. Let's see. This is a whole new experience. Let's fold you down and let's press and see if it cracks. Like that. All right, take a look. There's no crack in there. Huh, that's kind of cool. One and two. It's also not very warped as paper uh, for the heat embossing that I did. So that is kind of cool. It's pretty, pretty solid. I love the idea of this being in the center, right? Because I think that's a really nice look and feel. But what about, this is all about, right, the detail of the flower. And so what I think I would like to do, right, is just figure out a position where this little floral could look very pretty, just kind of cascading across, right? That's what I don't know. I, I knew I knew I wanted it for texture. I just don't know yet how I am going to position it. Let me grab some dot runner because I think if I'm playing this smart, the only place that I really need dot runner is just on the inside. In fact, check this out. I could use this in the center. Uh, just so uh, just as my guide for where I want dot runner. Does that make sense? Because then I know that it won't, although I think that's awkward because I can't really press down the way I want to, but I think this will work. Now 
we just come in here and we're visualizing even though we're not placing it quite yet because I know that. Let's just do it. Let's press it down, right? Like that. And then we know we're going to pop that up. Oh, I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Here's what I'm going to do though. I'm going to go on the reverse side and just really press that down. And then I guess I could bring in my little paper trimmer. I'm going to go like that. And if it's over a little, it's totally fine, right? Because we don't mind. We don't mind. It's just texture. We're just adding in some texture. So let's get you here. Press you until I can feel it lined up against the edge like that. And cut. Same thing over here. Just rotate and continue trimming off the excess. Mm -hmm. right. oh, looking pretty good. And let's do this one. Now, I think too, if I wanted to find, I think I have, maybe I have some vellum uh, adhesive somewhere for these little extra parts, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that yet. Haven't decided, but I think I am going to get a little liquid glue and I'm going to get my new favorite ruler. Have you seen our new Simus's stamp? Positively Everything T-Square Ruler. Six inches for standard cards and a huge lip. Well, not huge, but it's got this, <laughs> don't, this wonderful lip to help you line things up. I'm just gonna put this on the foam. This is Gina K Connect Glue. And now what you can do, right? You take your card and you, you take your ruler and you, you press it right up against the edge of the card and it's going to help you when you line things up. Oh, and the size is just so great. All right, I am going to visualize the top and bottom here, okay? And press. And that ruler is gonna help me just make sure that is straight on my card. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Look at all that, that's so fun. Now. One thing that I thought I could do here is I could take just a little liquid adhesive on my finger, because this does dry clear, just a little, right? And just come down here, maybe just put a little there, right? Come up here. Put a little under here as well, just kind of like that, right? And that way it just holds it mostly into place, right? I have to wash my hands off though. Getting messy. Let's go here and just go like that. Because it dries clear and you're not really going to see much of it. In fact, I could have just glued the whole thing down. But I like this to have a tiny little bit of zhuzh to it, you know? So let me go wash off my hand and then we'll add some sequins. Actually, I just changed my mind and put some glue, a little more glue down to hold some of that down. Because at the top, I am a little bit off, and I am a little bit off at the bottom. So you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to come in here with my big scissors and just go there. See? I'm not so bad with scissors. And then maybe put a little more in here. The thing is, this Connect Glue is actually just great for something like this. Press it down. Wipe away the excess. Like... Yeah, no one's going to know it's there. You know what? I'm going to do a little more here. I don't even have to do it on my finger. Press that down. Ooh, good stuff and good for me to know this little tip. So just go like that. Wow, Connect Glue, you're quite literally good for everything. And really all this is doing is adding a little texture, right? It's not, I'm a little bit over here, so let's go. Perf. Yay. Okay. So now, kind of fun. Let's get some shine. Have an arrangement that I like. I think this is nice. We'll just, you know, we'll just mix it up up here, right? So I will glue my sequins. These are the confetti style. Boop, right onto the vellum. Boop. Just sort of a mishmash here of a design. Come on. Oh, that 
was a reverse boop. Boop, boop, nice. Uh, how about in there? Kind of give a little boop, a little weight. The largest sequin is here. Boop. Maybe bring this up a little. Boop. And maybe right there. Oh, I don't think I have enough glue. Boop. Right in like that. And you know what? I'm going to stick a little bit in there. I'm going to press that down and hold that for a second because I don't want that flipping up right there. And then I can just wipe away the excess glue. If I had known how well Connect Glue would work to hold vellum, I don't even think I would have, uh, I don't think I would have used uh, the, the dot runner. But that is the finished card project. A little involved, right? I mean, <laughs> but for me, finding a fun textural way to use a big old flower I think that is a really fun birthday card. And, you know, if you have any big florals and some vellum at home, try this technique. Combine your stamp sets, right? You don't always have to use the same from one set, but I love the way that turned out. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find the links to all the products I used in today's video below in the YouTube description box. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.